What about the turn up here for Grand Final Day? Uh, uh, I would like to know, as we always do, Jim, I want to know where the support oh. is because I've got a feeling that famous Collingwood chant that went out in the yes. Premier Final was a beautiful, spine tingling thing. I think it might get drowned out today. I, I reckon that oh, the. Uh, I think the St Kilda fans have got just as loud yep. a voice, so. Well, test it out, Gary. Just a little test, if you wouldn't mind. Collingwood supporters, please! It's pretty yeah. good. There's a bit there. <laughs> oh, 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 all right, then I might be wrong. Right, I think you've pulled the wrong rein, Gary, no, myself. All right, wrong. enough. What about uh, if there's any love in the house for the Saints? Oh, there's Gary. a bit there, guys. There's not, a bit there. But not much not at much. the moment. Yeah, yeah well, it's, 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 either there's not much or they're just a little quiet. I think the Collingwood chant I might think, get itself up. They're a little bit nervous. They're a little bit nervous. They're waiting for the start of the game, Gary. Pies are favourite, and rightly so. Mm -hmm. They're waiting for that first 20 minutes of the game. Is your confidence built, Spud, as the week's gone on? Because um, I know you've been on them from day yep. one. My, I've, I've selected Collingwood confidently early in the week, but as the week's rolled on, it's just come together a little bit. And uh, by all reports, yesterday they had a great team meeting. Ross Lyons' last two and a half minutes didn't say a word. Pressed the play button and made the boys sit there and watch the last two and a half minutes of last year's grand final. Could have uh, cut the air with a knife, Damo. All walked out of the room and that was the last thing that the St Kilda boys have done till they get here today. Which is, uh, look, I know it doesn't count a lot, the emotion, but I think Ross just wanted to revisit the fact that they hurt last year. They had an outstanding season. They won 20 games of Saints. Let's not forget that last year. I know it doesn't count for anything when the balls bounce, but... Ball reports, they just, uh, not a word spoken, not a text message after that. They all just got in their cars, went home to dwell on that. I think they'll muster up every little bit of energy because they'll need it to beat the Pies. They've been the best team all year. Well, Spud, I want to ask you about Lou Graham and I also want to ask you about Del Sando and whether they'll play because there is big mail that uh, the big boy McAvoy is an absolute definite starter. But before we get to that, our main man over here may have some news on the black and white. I'm just uh, suggesting, Damo, this mm. mail is usually pretty good and on the money. I so like your pre-match information, Gary. At five past 12, I'm telling the Collingwood supporters, Simon Prestigiacomo, out. Oh. Out. Out. Presti. Definitely, Gary. Nathan Brown, in. Ouch. There you go. Definitely. Pretty definite. <laughs> no, is that hundred percent? I reckon it's close too, Spud Regal. I was with Jeff Walsh, Gary, at a breakfast this morning, and um, asked him to be one hundred percent categorical about his answer, yep. and he said definitely would play. But we do know he's um, sometimes it? economical yeah. with the truth. Second Jeff language Walsh. in football clubs, Damo. Right. Lies. Lies. Yeah. And the, the thing about McAvoy, Jay, yes. and that, that's amazing. I think Mick just getting back to Nathan Brown. He's he's back the youngsters in all year. I think I was surprised everyone else at Presti, who deserves a game, but. Those youngsters have, have got the job done for Collingwood. So it'll be an amazing scenario. I think both sides, you know, Baker coming in, then Mick flipped Leon Davis because he assumed that Baker was going to come put another small forward. But the McAvoy one really surprised me because every premiership team... Well, because he's got broken ribs. He's, he's sore. He's probably, you know, he's going to get some injections. We saw Nigel Lappin out here about five years ago yeah, do it for Brisbane. That's OK. But if you expect him to ruck in the absence of McAvoy Couldn't with do a it. broken rib, you wouldn't think. So maybe... Spud, I, I, guys, I don't even think it's maybe. Mac My mail is that 100% McAvoy plays. Right. For and, who? And who well, comes out? I don't know whether Baker's going to play. I, I don't know. That's what I hear. Okay. Well, McAvoy, you look at the history of premiership teams, they've always got a ruckman. You look at the, uh, the Brisbane Lions, they had Charman and Keating, yep. North Melbourne, Capuano, McKernan, Essendon Barnes and Alessio. I was surprised anyone that McAvoy's out because if Gardner goes down, because Jolly and Lee Brown are saying, how good is this? We've got yep. one ruckman in Gardner. Yep. Let's take the juice out of him nice and early, double team him, triple team him, run him out of his legs. And then, as you said, if Cozzy has to go into the ruck, Yep. And he cops one in the ribs, because that's what Jolly will be honing in on. They know where it is. Absolutely. It's the left side. Yep. Well, bottom they, three. Don't, they do now. Bot bottom <laughs> three ribs. Well, they've, watched, they've watched the video, guys. He landed on this side. The bottom three ribs are bruised or cracked, whatever. As a ruckman, it's a grand final. That knee's going to go straight in. Spud, when was the last time Ross Lyon brought a team in without two ruckmen? It doesn't happen. It doesn't yeah, happen. Five or six this year. But that, that's it. That it. No, yeah. He plays them every week, so yeah. you cannot tell me he's not playing today. The only thing with that is Grant Thomas coach teams didn't have a lot of ruckmen. Jason Blake was first ruck a lot of the time for Grant Thomas. 
Now, Lee Brown, when Jolly goes off the ball, Lee Brown will go into the ruck. Now, Jason Blake versus Lee Brown is not such a, a bad mismatch. Uh, and that... not, but he hasn't done it all year. Why would you do it on the biggest stage, the most yep. important game? I mean, you wouldn't go as radical as that. But the, the prestige Como out, Nathan Brown in. Let's assume that's right. What, what is the merit in naming Prestige Como? Is that to put some doubt or to have uh, Nick Revolt think about someone other than Brown or Reed or one of those blokes who are going to go to him? I can't quite see the logic. I think it's, it's go down. I was going to say, yeah, look, it is an intrigue um, element, Gary, but Mick Malthouse loves Simon Prestige Como like very few others on that list. I would think he's his number one most loved person and, and player. Almost, I think Mick would put Simon up there in his top five of all-time people he's come across in footy. He's just absolutely loved him. I think he would have felt that by putting him in the team, it's at least some reward and recognition of what's been an outstanding career. And but then yank him out. Then yank him out. But at the footy show on, on Thursday night, Jason Ackermanis did ask a very clever question off air um, to Mick about, who's, has he told the players that are in, out? And has he told the players that are in? And, and Mick at that point hadn't spoken to them. So... Yeah, there's a bit of intrigue but, going on. Spud, grand final week, you pick 25, yep. and then you work out 24 hours out, even 12 hours out, who's playing. I mean, the, t- the name teams are irrelevant. No, I think with Rewalt's a little bit different, uh, because the fact is Rewalt can play deep and up the ground. Now, naming Presty, Ross Lyon would have went to work and saying, OK, Presty can play on Rewalt deep, but let's get uh, Rewalt on his bike up around the wing. Then they'll have to change over with Reed, so it'll be a mismatch. So... I think it's been mind games from both coaches with the with the ins and outs, and it's still going to be there. We, we're not going to know it all. Uh, about yeah, twenty say. past two. Uh, and the other one is Jim, and I'll put you on the spot, but um, I will. Uh, Graham yes. and Del Santo that were played down yep. very, very um, impressively in the end. They they squashed any great speculation or rumour about them. Uh, very, very proppy, Jason Graham. Yep. And Nick Del Santo, extremely sore. Yep. And I, I'm not saying they won't play, Gary, but the mail is that they are not right. Mm. So, therefore, they're going to be nursing them, both of them. Now, Graham is huge for them, isn't he? I mean, that, the run from behind drive he gives off halfback is enormous. Well, they both are. And Nicky Dell goes without saying, you know, All-Australian repeated. So, that worries me from a St Kilda point of view, that you've got those two... Uh, both going to have to be nursed, Spud, through a grand final. Oh, look, it's an amazing scenario. They're the two players St Kilda need. They need to play at their best. Graham's got that long raking kick that can get over the flood, yep. that, that 65 metre. He doesn't always hit pinpoint, but he can get it over the top to a long target in Cozzy or Rewalt. And, of course, Del Zanto, he's the guy in the middle that, that really makes the right decisions. Leon Davis, that one really surprised me at the selection table. Now, imagine Leon driving to the game now. He hasn't got a great grand final record. He hasn't really performed on the big stage. He's been an outstanding player, 200 games. But he'd be driving to the ground now, I need to perform. Mick's shown a lot of faith in me. There's been a couple of players in form that have been dropped. It's the biggest gamble, I think, from Mick's point of view. Given that he didn't play last week and he wasn't injured, they didn't want to play him against Geelong because his record against Geelong is very, very poor. So they've rolled the dice there, got through, and now... To make a change on the back of the way Collingwood played last week. Is it possible he's out too, Gary? Well, I haven't got that message yet, Damo, but it it does seem. If you watch that game of footy that Collingwood played against Geelong, you would be hard-pressed to say we're going to change that side. Why would you? And particularly when there's a, a player with a question mark such as Leon Davis on the big stage, to bring him back into that side is a massive gamble. The the thinking I hear, Gary, is that they want Gilbert to go to Davis. Because if he plays on someone else, he can just fold off and do all the stuff we always see him do. Is there any relevance to that? Well, he'll fold off if Leon isn't getting the footy. And um, he struggled to do it on the big stage. I think he's a really important player. Uh, A little uh, quiet time that St Kilda had. Not to say quiet, but they struggled was when Gilbert and Fisher particularly had some defensive work put into them and they struggled to to rebound and, and drop off and help out on the way through. So... Look, I just think it's a massive gamble, that one, and I'll I'll wait to see whether he actually runs out. 